Started with hands and mud till it became clay Brick upon brick for a thousand days Mind, heart, soul, blood, sweat, tears Building the foundation took several years Yo, 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 what's going on? This is the NOC, the Nerds of Color And I am back yes, yes. with another knock exclusive I am Kuya P, a.k.a. Patrick Michael Strange mm. Babinka Boy, a Dobro And I am here yes. with another amazing, inspiring artist out of St. Paul, Minnesota, he goes by see more perspective. What's up, bro? How are you, my Indeed. man? What's up? I'm all right, fam. I'm all right. I'm uh, you know, here working in the studio in, okay. in San Pablo, doing yes. the thing, you know, <laughs> getting over some good news over the weekend. All right, it was yeah. beautiful weather, and yeah. now uh now it's gray, and I feel like it's been a reality check. It's like gray and snowing for two days. I mean, straight up yesterday. The street lights were on at 2 okay. p.m. No joke. So I just feel like, okay, <laughs> reality check. Let's get back to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're celebrating, you know what I mean? No doubt. But. You know, the, uh, I, 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 we had to do a... So FYI, we are filming after the results of election 2020, or at least for the majority of the world. There's just one mm -hmm. big red cat, orange cat with the red hat <laughs> that won't yeah. accept it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, there was a lot of us. Uh, we were doing a lot of, because, you know, it's COVID times as well. Uh, mm -hmm. We were doing a lot of online Zoom check-ins. I was doing with a bunch of other friends and just throwing mm -hmm. back shots in celebration. Nice, yes. So, yeah, so that's why I'm kind of like, chill. <laughs> <laughs> Word, good. You deserve it, fam. We deserve it. You, you know, you know, Whew. my mm -hmm. guy. Um, but it's a pleasure to finally have you on here. Uh, to talk about uh, everything that is Seymour perspective, because you mm. are a cat with a message, and I, mm. I'm one of those cats that really love those kind of cats. Because mm. there's a lot of ringtone rappers. Not to hate on the ringtone rappers. Get your bag, get your money. <laughs> right. But I need cats with substance to educate yeah. these young heads, and you yeah. are one of those guys. But before we get into this interview with Seymour Perspective, mm -hmm. I'm going to show you some clips right now so you can just vibe with the brother, and then we'll get into this interview. All right, here we go. There are two banthas down there, but I don't see any... Wait a second. They're sand people, all right? I can see one of them now. All rappers is ill, I'm the antithesis. Spit the wickedness to cure all of your sicknesses. Ain't with it if it ain't bumping like a bomb blast. Sick as the suckers, it's time to take them out like womp rats. You hear them talk loud, you hear them talk fast. It's all grandiloquence, just some bombast. You gotta hear me out, that's not the rap you're looking for. We came to take them out, it's what we brought the rookie for. Damn people are easily startled, but they'll soon be back, and in greater numbers. Step in the club with the scum and villainy I move the crowd with the force but they flow so willingly Y'all with the mic also stay, stay on target As you crumble the pieces cause you're way off mark kids I got my headphones eyes closed see you more again Something you can feel reaching out with metachlorine The sits in your ears But you gotta know that shit is whack In the tractor beam gotta get out Cause it's, it's a, a trap <laughs> Years of hard work, with hopes never to encounter such an evil as Aku again. Always be alert, my son, for the presence of evil is sometimes right behind you. He came up in the echo with the fire and the smog, rattling the cages in the brain under a shroud. Found space to learn in the hills in the fog. Up behind his father's eye, a silhouette like smile. Their house was the hood of the Mexican descendants, indigenous and friendless. Different than the rest, just a tribe in the wilderness, robotic beyond fences. Suffered some attacks, but mostly just not on my guest list. Little cyborg Mexica in the cipher, digging for messages in the speakers to decipher. Capacity for knowledge, so we'd listen to the experts. Shouting math with thunderstorms and whisper with the Zephyr. Taught him of the goddess, how to call on and protect her. His hollow mission was the sonic seed in vest. As he generated light and connected with other sources. A blanket of deceit was woven by other forces. Uh, I love the old days, you know? I am free to slice the world as I did. You know what I hate? We're not allowed to punch back anymore. 
I love the old days. You know what they used to do to guys like that when they were in a place like this? They'd be carried out on a stretcher, folks. Presidential? It's laughable and preposterous Attributing traits of the affable to the monstrous But wait though Previous animals of this office did Commit crimes against humanity more than officers Makes sense Makes Martin Shkreli look amicable The latest of the makers It brought you all of the amity Get out Riding through the school out to an island You can't make it before drowning On a safety boat they smiling And your breath's out That's the class Pass with your hand out And he did then he said that they ain't giving no more hand out that's just for taking what you're still saying is One day you're paying back And now 16 got up in his bed 16 and my got up in his bed No verse or song could give itself a rhyme So it's in the mix Same in Christian But it's Christmas It's like the moment when his cabinet gets open They'll be falling like the Romans with my friends when it rains, it pours. When it rains, it flows into the runoff. Pours into the subplot, sticks into the static in the backstory. Rappers try to speak it, but they rap poorly. Like a second rate mummification. Mumble and hatred come and complacent. They think they lie, but they under the basement. Ghost and scene of a B movie storyline. Lacking vision like the button eyes in Coraline. Ain't a damn. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. That's my man, Seymour Perspective. I have him right here. You see him on the screen. We are now just going to get into it. But you know what? Mm -hmm. I'm going to hit you off the top as an icebreaker. Yeah. All right, bro? Let's go. Because what do you got? The Nerds of Color. And I think you should pass this with Flying Colors because I've mm -hmm. checked out the Instagram. I've seen the Twitter. You are a bit <laughs> of a nerd. What we do, or what I do, is a nerd check. Uh -huh, uh -huh. What? What? Is uh, a, a what are some nerd things that you can do a TED talk on that you can test anybody that tries to come with it to see more perspective? Word. Uh, what are you nerdy about? Hit them up. Let me know. Yo, I mean, what am I nerdy about? That's yeah. too long of a list, man. But <laughs> on it's on some TED talk stuff. Okay, so like uh, Samurai Jack. You know what I mean? Okay. In terms of putting world building with different worlds and a time travel thing where you can do like anything you want you can have dragons and robots and you could be alone have a samurai alone in the desert and you could be on a, on a mountain you know facing uh, a viking or whatever you know what i mean so like that's super tight um because you bring star wars into that you bring all these different mythologies you bring i mean you have just every episode can be something else plus just the nerdery of you know the original Easterns to begin with, those original samurai flicks, you know? Yeah. Um, going back to Akira Kurosawa, you know, and Sword of Doom and, you know, all kinds of stuff. So I'll throw that out there for starters. But then there's also like uh, sneaking into your parents' room as a child with your brother, straight up like infiltrating the room <laughs> to get into the stash of hidden. <laughs> Star yeah. Wars and Conan, Star Wars toys. And Conan I was, I was actually looking for a different kind of tape. I thought you were going to go there, but I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, I wonder if you could explain it. I, you know, I'm not sure. I wonder if you could say more about that. Uh, nah, I'm going to keep that on. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, so I'm, with you. Okay, you, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you. <laughs> no, no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> No, you were saying you were sneaking Star Wars and and I think I Star Wars toys and yeah. Conan comic books. Oh, uh, my, my pops had like a stash. The Conan in there. joints was off the chain. I really haven't talked to other cats that were down with the Conan comic book as was. Well remember, we, Conan mm -hmm. had like the the magazine even even bigger. Exactly. Bro. Yeah, like yes. I think of those as the comics, but like those are the joints. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, you know, I don't know if the, the I don't know if the art was Frank Frazetta. But it, but it was that on the covers, thing. I believe, was Buscema, John Buscema, who did uh, the How to Draw the Comics the Marvel Way, which was like my Bible as a young Patrick as uh, trying to be a comic artist. Uh, uh, Buscema was on the art, but Frazetta uh, and Boris Vallejo and Julie mm, Bell were some mm. of the, the dynamic painters that illustrated the, the covers. Uh, yeah. Beautiful you know, what, what was always ill to me is that you had a painting you had some art that Frazetta did that inspired the series of books that's just wild like that's yeah. how ill the artwork was that yeah. you saw it and you were like okay how do I get into this character into this you know it was the uh what was it called death dealer did oh you yeah, ever yeah, read yeah, those? yeah yeah I remember you know where it's like he put on a mask it it, it didn't want to come off so he'd have to like be very careful because it kind of take him over and like 
the horns would change shape and all this kind of stuff. I haven't read it since oh, I was man. a kid. I'm sure it's terrible. Damn. You got me wanting <laughs> to pull them out, dog. You got me yeah. wanting to dig in my 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 long boxes and pull all them jo joints out. Right. You know what? Before I forget, because I mm -hmm. I mentioned a couple of artists. I also want to give shout out shouts out to some Filipino artists since I I, I have my yeah. new video podcast called Show Pal Show. There was some mm -hmm. great Filipino artists that were killing it that mm -hmm. got into the States via the Conan the Barbarian comic. So shout out to mm -hmm. Rudy Nabrez, Alfredo Ocala, Ernie Cologne, although Ernie was, I believe, uh, was Hispanic. But mm -hmm. uh, just so many amazing artists from other countries, immigrants that were doing it, you know what I'm saying? Like, you mm -hmm. know, immigrants get the job done, you know, yes. so love, but were yes. just made their way through uh, the Conan comic. Mm. And it's just we there's a lot of love for us as immigrants in that comic, so I just mm. wanted to give them some love. But yeah, much love. You got me needing to dig. go back in dig, as bro. well. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. I got yeah. some research to do. Oh, bro, yeah, we were killing it, man. Yeah, because I I know you're Latino as well. Uh, yeah, bruh. Yeah, we were it, we were we got some representation in uh with Marvel and in the comics game through that work on Conan, and then they gave us other work uh, mm. on some of the other DC Marvel titles wherever they were at, but. So yeah, dope. that was a gateway for a lot of us immigrant artists. Wow, I didn't realize that. Yeah, bro. That's fresh. Cool, cool. So so nerd check would be you Conan, Star Wars, you can go to town <laughs> with that, and Samurai Jack. And shout yeah. out to Phil Lamar. Phil Lamar is a who's the voice of Samurai Jack. Good yeah. friend, amazing actor, so, beyond he's the voice. Dope. But Phil Lamar is my guy. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. All right, so you passed the nerd check. You passed the nerd appreciate check. It, appreciate it. Appreciate it. So uh, let's talk making about you. <laughs> yeah. So what? You making me nervous over here? I'm not, okay. <laughs> nah, bro. We make it I'm easy. That, that was icebreaker. Let's <laughs> talk about you. I want to know all about Seymour Perspective. How you became Seymour Perspective, and just the yeah. work, uh, the arts that you've uh, given out to the world. But let's start from the seed. Let's talk mm -hmm. about. How did you end up in St. Paul, Minnesota? Let's talk about your parents. So how did they meet? And then all of a sudden yeah. they birth you in, into Word. this world. Let's talk about them. What were they about? And did that kind of, you know, did you follow in their footsteps your, with your upbringing? Uh, let's talk about mm -hmm. uh, mom and dad, uh, Seymour. Yeah. Yeah. It's real interesting. You know, I learned, I learned things about each of them, you know, as, as you do, as you grow up and, you go back and you're like surprised at things they, they weren't as into, you know, like I would have thought they were like huge nerds and then the, all the stuff they showed us, but they were just like giving us these, like, this is some shit you're going to love. But then realizing they weren't like huge star Wars fans or whatever, you know, it's like kind of blew my mind. Um, but it's a trip also discovering who they were and how intuitively, you know, like our, like our path is kind of like, taking their path a little bit further and that can go either positive or negative i think for anybody you know what i'm saying um and so so i'm mixed um my mom is white she's um english and norwegian um grew, uh was born in fargo grew up on the south side of minneapolis um my papa is from silao guanajuato mexico um and uh they met because she was she's taught generations of immigrants how to speak English. Um, she was like uh, this this cultural stronghold kind of on the west side of St. Paul. Um, you know, and you know, like if you say west side, it's like anywhere the west side, if they call it the west side, it's yeah. full of all the Latinos, you know? Um, and so that was, that was a huge um, experience actually, was learning a lot about the culture from her. She's like, you know, Chicano studies and all this stuff and just, just embedded in, in the culture. Um, and she was teaching um, his brother, my uncle, she was doing these night classes with parents. So she, she had his brother in there and his wife and they kind of set them up. Um, and I don't know, I don't know why my pops came to Minnesota. I don't know why he chose Minnesota, honestly. I just kind of feel like, you know, he traveled through time, you know, through a Mayan temple um, <laughs> and like emerged, you know what I mean? Okay. And found and found and you know, he gravitated towards this uh, you know, warrior, educator, poet spirit of 
uh, you know, of uh, of the Viking heritage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> and they yeah. they came together. You know, um, okay. Like you know, she was a teacher. She she's retired now, but she's a teacher my whole life, and that influenced me. Um, I later found out that my pops was like super artistic, but he was somebody who like came here um, and was just like putting in a lot of brutal work for the fam, you know, like mm-hmm. just ugly shit at the refinery and all this stuff. And then there's so many stories that come out of that because that's so much pressure. And then, you know, the immigrant experience of just like being on the outside, having a thick ass accent, growing up and realizing my dad had an accent and being like, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And uh, so that kind of stuff is, you know, has so many, has so many layers, but I think a lot about like my spirit growing out of them, like him with the creative side, she's definitely an artist and creative and in his storytelling. You know, when I think about why I do what I do, a lot of it has to do with storytelling, you know, of like sitting with her outside in the springtime and her talking about, you know, the cosmos talking about, you know, um, the Mexica and the Maya and like, you know, we're stardust and like all this stuff, you know? And then I think about him, like just being a bold ass dude, just like, you know, just coming here doing the thing and just like, you know, putting it down for the fam and, and then like bring in, bring in fam out, bring in the Tias and the Tias, you know, and eventually we got like this whole, tribe out here in the twin cities you know wow. um, so he was the first so, to, enter, to come out that way and then everybody else yeah. started migrating there afterwards yeah yeah he kind of kind of made a place for folks wow. um yeah so so i think that that combination i think is is very much who i am in terms of like communication like my mom's a linguist and all this stuff um that creativity that creative side uh from my pops from both of them actually the educator um And then learning through both of their experiences, um, really about injustice too, you know, Um, from the immigrant experience to um, the disability um, uh, oppression that my mom faced with her disabilities and stuff. Um, And, you know, it being very clear that I needed to, to, to make a better world um, for, for people like, like my parents and, and like me, you know, my family. So that's awesome. That's beautiful, man. That that's mm. cool. Now I can it comes together when you find out when you connect with the parent question, which I've mm-hmm. just now recently started to do that. You know, I, mm-hmm. I when when I do a lot of these interviews, like tell me about your past. A lot of people don't go there, and then you still try to figure out how they came to be who they are. But mm-hmm. you need to find out. You know, a lot of us follow the journeys of our parents, and some do, you some know? don't. But uh, that's beautiful, man. I, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, the way I think of it is like it's it's a place where we start, and wherever we go from there is up to us. Yeah, exactly. And and in some ways, you know, like we can take it further, or we can like we can take away from it. Does that make sense? Because sometimes oh, yeah. we need to take away from those origins and stories too. Yeah. You know, like there's a lot of you know, it, it's not all sunshine and flowers with my pots. You know, like yeah. I was talking about the brutality of the. Ex- immigrant experience drinking and da, 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 da. and so there's all that stuff wound mm. up in it as well you know oh, um, yeah. and then i'm just really grateful to kind of like be on the other side of that where there's a lot been a lot of healing in the fan dope love it um so let's talk about growing up as a child of a teacher and and then growing up as a mestizo a, ch- a mixed child i'm a mixed child as well my, mm-hmm. my father is irish german and my mom is filipina um mm. Talk about being a mixed child growing up in a very, well, I, I don't know Minnesota, but I've been mm-hmm. to the Midwest and especially, the, mm-hmm. you know, what we know of, if you look at the results of the election, very white, you know, communities, but I, I would assume you lived mm-hmm. in a very mixed neighborhood. Um, but did yeah. you experience racism as a child and, you know, just the, the mixed yeah. child syndrome? And then also being a child of a teacher, because I would assume that's very yeah. hard. They would assume uh, he must get good grades or his te- his mom helps him out. Uh, let us know a little bit about your youth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no doubt. I feel like um, I was like, I was my mom's son in a lot of ways. And like, there were times where I was like accompanying her in a summer school and like helping her. And then I had, you know, kids that I didn't go to school with seeing me as like teacher's pet or whatever. I'm just like, I'm just helping my mom. (laughs) You know what I mean? Just like a kid, like uh, with nowhere else to go while she needs to go to work, you know? Um, 
and so yeah so that that's a that's a whole trip um i grew up my house was just outside of saint paul and so we were the hood is the way i describe it like my yard was the hood that's where like you know the loud music was the loud brown people like the barbecues the rancheros playing somebody you know complains my pops turns up the music you know like we were we were the hood um okay. and it was still a pretty working class spot like they I think they were living in Minneapolis before um, before I was born, and then somewhere I was born, and they moved. They moved, and I was born like right right around the same time um, with my two older siblings um, coming along for the ride. So there was a lot of racism. Uh, there was a lot of racism where I grew up, um, and then there was there was a lot of like that like soft racism of like as I was getting older, I'd be like da da da, you know. I'm, Mexican or I'd say something in Spanish or something and um, be like the people would be like oh I didn't know I didn't know you were Mexican like like it was a compliment you know what I mean yeah. and it's like and also like you know that they know <laughs> you know what I mean? um, and so like there's all of that weird really weirdness um, so I never felt like I represented that town that I grew up in, you know, that specific little suburb. But I was lucky because we were at my mom's school every day after school. I went to school in St. Paul for a few years, um, but I also had family all over. So like there were, all, we were always at the community events on the West side. We were always in Midway with the fam. We were like all around. Plus we were always getting back to Mexico on these road trips, like felt like all summer, every summer, you know, until I was Dope. 15 or whatever. So you travel um, back to Mexico every now and then with your, with your yeah, That's yeah, 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 that's cool. So I feel really fortunate because like I had this weird like experience and like, and, and suffered a lot of racism, you know, where, it, where I was from, but that wasn't my whole experience. I always got outside of that. You know what I mean? Um, so I feel I feel really blessed and really really lucky for that. That's dope. That's dope. Um, what were some of uh, so as so uh, what were some of the things you remember falling in love with first? Because you're a man of various who are who's into a lot of different art forms and mm -hmm. you express yourself in various creative means. Uh, yeah. Like what came first? Did music come first? Did art come first? Uh, mm. What were yeah. some of your first loves? Yeah, no doubt. Um, I feel like visual art was like the first thing. Like that's when I like, I feel like I knew I loved water and I knew I was an artist and I knew I loved music, honestly. Like okay. those are the three like earliest things I can remember in this life, right? Yeah. Um, and so I, I knew I was an artist, but I didn't think of myself as a musician. Actually like in in school when we would have like, a music class or like even if I signed up for something like choir I signed up to learn saxophone I was a terrible student like music class was like a second like recess when I was in elementary school like I did not take it seriously at all but also like how was I really supposed to because those classes weren't for me you know what I mean they weren't speaking to me culturally they weren't like presenting relevant things and it was like, and then there's like teachers who were like, always kind of looking at you weird anyway, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that's not connecting. And so you like, you clown as, as, as to rebel against it all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what I did, you know? And I was like smarter than half of those teachers anyway. So I was like running circles around them, <laughs> you know? Um, and, uh, and it wasn't until later, you know? And again, I knew I loved music. But it wasn't until later that I realized, like, I could contribute, you know what I mean? And that started through percussion. Uh, but before that, even, uh, I found poetry. And so I was always reading, reading stories, whatever, storytelling from my mom, that kind of stuff. And then some, somewhere along the line, I discovered poetry, Langston Hughes. And it was just like, oh, shit. You know, I remember writing some stuff. I, I wrote something about the Mercado. And, like, I remember... Like, I don't know, I won something, I don't know, yeah. whatever. And then, but then years later, that kind of got re-sparked as a way for me to like process some of the hardship that was going on, like stuff with my pops. Um, you know, he went to prison and uh, he had been dealing drugs and all this stuff. And, 
And so it was a way for me to like sort that stuff out. Yeah. Um, and, and like s try to, try to see the world around me and organize in a way that made sense, but then also to like see myself, you know? Um, and hip hop was always there as well. And so eventually the poetry became hip hop when it like hip hop, like pulled me in. It was like, Hey, we've been with you the whole time. Yeah. You've been a part of this thing. You know, you've been break dancing since you were a little kid, you know, I don't break dance now, but you know, <laughs> like, you know, like uh break in came yeah. out and we were like, preschoolers doing head spins in the basement yeah we were like having break battles at birthday parties on the west side and stuff you yeah, i was know? a b-boy too ain't gonna lie i was a b-boy b-boy before the rhymes yeah nice nice, nice. <laughs> yeah so you know um that's so, so that's hip hop at the very beginning like when you were falling in love with music uh, and then hip-hop like or, <clears throat> like what was the first like music or tracks or uh what what brand of music were you into before you yeah discovered hip-hop like like what's the sound well, i was always into all kinds of stuff you know like what are some you know, little artist uh -huh. influences yeah yeah so i think from a young age like my parents were always listening to different stuff and they were listening to the radio and like my, they had their records and they you know i think you know my dad probably had some uh, some eight tracks and that kind of stuff you know okay. um but there was so there were a lot of like funk influences okay. a lot of like carryover from the 70s like i said the ranchero stuff was always yeah. playing at like the family barbecues um my mom was super into the beatles um and so for me it was like well, i remember being very little i didn't know what was what really i just yeah. loved music i just had to have the boom box on yeah. and i could find something i liked when my mom asked me to, you know, like help with the chores or whatever. Gotcha. Um, and then, so, but I do remember like the first two records I had, you know, on like some kind of little play school joint where um, it was somebody's watching me with the hook that sounds like Michael Jackson, but it's not. Um, and then with this, and it's this super weird, like spooky, there's a super weird eighties video for it and all this stuff somebody's watching me oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's right yeah yeah, 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 yeah. okay and, uh. and then run dmc was the other 45 that i had okay. um so that was like a you know from jump you know because the thing is is like i was kind of born with like hip-hop being brought to a, a wider audience you know yeah. so it was always around me and it was it kept on growing and blowing up as I was growing up, you know? Same. Yeah, so we're probably about the same age. Yeah, I was born in 79, so. 77, I'm, I'm two I'm years not old, supposed to say, younger, you know? uh, two years uh, older than you. <laughs> yeah. Nice, cool, okay. cool. Yeah, so you know, right. yeah, we grew up with him. We kind of have that experience, yeah. Exactly, yeah. which was a beautiful thing. So De La Soul I'm, I'm, on the radio. Yes. You know what I'm Ooh. saying, Diggable Planets. These like, young cats don't the know, bro, to grow up with hip hop and see it transition and, change and then just grow from like new york to 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 everywhere else and other genres and other areas well then there was like the west coast stuff that was uh, blowing up with yeah. the freestyle fellowship and the quantum projects mm. you know like just ridiculous yes you know so um so yeah being able to see that whole growth but then also just being like i was able to turn on the radio and have de la soul in my ear yeah. and have public enemy in my face mm -hmm. you know and like that changed obviously in 96 with yeah. the telecommunications act yeah. that like cut off who had access to music and the airwaves. Right. Um, so, you know, we were really fortunate to have that before that control uh, was given to, you know, a handful of record companies. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that stuff was there from the get go, you know, even like, um, who are these cats? Uh, they were like super political. They did Mr. Wendell and the everyday people. Oh, um, uh, Arrested Development. Arrested Development. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I had their tape. Oh, you know yeah. I, mean? I had some heavy D, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you remember your first um, tape or your first uh, CD? Uh, I remember first my first tape, tape was Fat Boys yeah. Crushing. Nice. You know, I was watching, uh, I watched Disorderlies. You know, oh, I watched yeah. like the Fat Boys movies and everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. My first tape actually, um, I remember very clearly was I was in first or second grade and I got licensed to ill oh, for Beastie Boys. Yeah, I got it in my Easter basket. Nice. That's so dope. I got my license to ill at a very young age. 
Cool. <laughs> and I've been ill ever since. <laughs> um, Dope. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and then, and then 96 happened and the, suddenly you didn't hear any real shit. Mm-hmm. And that's like when the Jiggy era came and all that stuff. Yeah. And it was like very specific points of views and styles, you know, yeah. being, it being became, shared on the uh, airway. For me, it became uh, those uh, Columbia catalogs or those where you could get like 10 CDs oh, yeah. for like a cheap price or whatever. Yeah, yeah. right. Be, yeah. Uh, that's when I first got, I think, Dr. Dre's uh, The Chronic and then uh, the Snoop Dogg was through those Columbia nice. House. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, Columbia House. Yeah. Disc all at one time. Yeah. Right, Boy, right. Man. Making my mom upset. You spent this much? Well, was I wasn't spending, I was spending their money. <laughs> it was terrible. Yeah, I yeah. hip hop yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah, so, so then there was a reemergence, you know? Mm-hmm. Wu-Tang, uh, oh, yeah. Tribe came out with some new stuff. Um, actually, that was still 93, 94, I think, yeah. when... Um, when Wu Tang hit and all that stuff. So ab- after that, it was like DJ Shadow, and then yeah. finding re- reconnecting with like um, Gangstar, yeah, uh, yeah. J Ru the Damager, you know, and then kind of being pulled back in. So that's what that was my reintroduction, being gotcha. like, oh, this shit actually never stopped. Yeah, you know, and I got to dig back in, and then that influenced like becoming a poet to an MC, you know. Definitely, yeah. So you came from the leaders of the new school era, the LONS, the the pre busta yeah. before you know right. the extinction level event, just like when they're yeah, about yeah. knowledge, you know what I'm saying? The native the tongues, stuff. the native exactly, tongue the family. native tongues crew. So you know mm-hmm. what's up. So uh so you you get you started getting into music as a youth. Uh mm-hmm. w- when did you like uh know that you wanted to do pursue that a, a, as an actual thing? Was it like in high school, college? Uh, and can you remember just yeah. kind of like those early days of, you know, writing? You said you, I think you said you started off as a spoken word poet before you got into like becoming like an MC, right? I don't even think I thought of it as spoken word at that point. You know okay. what I mean? It was, yeah. I was just writing okay. as a way to deal okay. with stuff, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And sure. then as I was tuning in to like the second Diggable album came out and, you know, um, Moment of Truth and that kind of thing. So I was, this was like somewhere towards the second half of high school and, um, what I started doing was like writing these like disco party raps. Like I was just like, I was like this funk superhero and I was just part of this weird crew of like funk superhero weirdos that were like all into like a bunch of nerdy stuff and samurai films and hip hop and whatever. And so, you know, I was at the house party. Can you party. remember a, a line from there? Can you, can you, can oh, you man, recite anything from there? Uh, no, that's too, that's way too... <laughs> That's too deep cut, man. That's no I don't know if I'll ever find that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so that then that evolved, you know, and then the, that stuff became like super like like spiritual and like mystical or whatever, you know. I was just like finding myself. I was exploring, you know. Um, and all that just came through came through the rhymes, you know. So I was a lot <clears throat> I was at a lot of house parties um all over the cities, you know, um, in ciphers and whatnot and and then I had a band, Super Sound Soul Click. We did a few shows. We did a house party. We did some join, some other one. Um, we actually did this. Uh, one, of, one of the guys from the crew hooked us up with this show at like a county fair somewhere. I don't even remember where it was, but it was like out there somewhere. And it, but it was like the, the like sample day. It was like an intro day. Like it wasn't open yet, but they gave some people access, but nobody came. And so we literally were like playing for the llamas in the, in the like llama hut or whatever. So, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. So how was that early on and suggestions for people that are like starting off in this, you know, are kind of, mm-hmm. you know, brand new to this. What was it like getting a crew together? How, how did you feel sharing, collaborating with other people? Did you, yeah. uh, and getting gigs and going around the city and, and making things happen. Any lessons yeah. learned or, or uh, that you can you know, share in that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think that you just, you just gotta be you and like go for it and do the thing. And like, I just, I really think that you are a magnet, you know, for, for what you, what you want, you know? Um, and if you just allow yourself to be that magnet 
and just don't like I'm I'm pretty introverted. I'm pretty shy, you know. Um, but I just like made myself go out like Bon Appetit was popping. There was a specific spot, like a specific era of like Minneapolis Twin Cities hip hop, you know, and I would go out to Bon Appetit and check the shows and there'd be ciphers afterward and I would cipher with cats. Um, and I would meet folks and make those connections. And then we'd be like, you know, like making beats, you know, or like recording stuff for like a whole weekend or whatever, you know? So I think just for one, allow like your light to shine you know when people see it and recognize it like accept that build with them build take that as an opportunity to build a bridge but then there's also like people who kind of like want to run the show especially when you're a kid you know there's like somebody who thinks they're smarter than everybody who wants to be like the leader or whatever and that kind of thing and that very much gets in the way you know and then when they don't have your best interests at heart and you think they're really cool that might put you in some weird situations you know um, so you just, you kind of, it's a balance of like, definitely put yourself out there, get to know people, show love, build, but understand that like some folks are, are really just in it for their own, for their own gain and their own like social power really, you know? So don't let anybody use you, you know? Dope, dope. Um, also say writer's block. What do you, what do you do? Mm -hmm. What if you hit a, you know, a writing, and actually let's go talk about writing sessions when you just yeah. uh, wanting to get creative. How, what does Seymour perspective do when he just wants to just, you know, close off the world and just create, uh, let's yeah. get into that. And then when you come across a stumbling block, like writer's block and yeah. you just can't create, you're trying to, but it just won't come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, so I try to be creative in like all the ways that I can or the ways that interest me or appeal to me, you know, so like I'm drawn and I'm like painting and I'm doing hand style stuff and I'm, you know, I'm trying to like edit videos, I produce music, so I'm doing all these different things, right, I beatbox, so I think that that helps when you have multiple things that you can turn to at any given point, like you look behind me, I got all these different, you know, tools and like crafts, all these different things I could like play with. You know, yeah. and I think if you're if you're willing to like have fun and play with it, then you're going in the right direction because there's going to be a sense of wonder and discovery to what you're trying to do. You know, and I think that that's really important. And I think first and foremost, I'm trying as an artist, I'm trying to make myself available to inspiration. Right. So I'm just I'm designing my life in a way that I can be available to it. You know what I mean? So, you know, like I will pull over and like write down an idea that comes to me if I'm in a car or whatever, you know, or I will say it over and over again if I'm like on the road to Chicago, like I have, you know, or like, hey, sir, you take this memo, you know what I mean? Um, and build on it like that from there. And that's just like taking it seriously. That's taking myself seriously. It's taking the inspiration seriously that comes from who knows where that feeds me and always gives me something that it really makes me a person that has something to offer anybody else in the world. So without that, I don't have anything. So if I don't make myself available to it, I feel like that's, that's writer's block yeah. because then if you, you ignore it all this time and then you're like, cool, now it's time. Well, it's like the muses are like, fuck you. Like we're, we've been knocking on your door, you know, all month. And now you, you know, like they don't care about your job. They don't care about, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and so you, you, you gotta, you gotta be a medium in that way. And you have to have anything be able to, to move through you, you know, and you can't judge it. I think people stop themselves by judging it, you know, by saying they get an idea and they're like, Oh damn. Oops. Uh, they're like, damn, that's, <laughs> I'm making this mixtape and I accidentally, I talk with my hands and I, all of a sudden I'm hitting play, um, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. So like all this, all this stuff is moving through you. And people are judging it. Oh, well, that's too dark. Or like, well, that sounds too happy or whatever dumb things, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, that sounds gay or whatever. Like really yeah. stupid yeah. shit that people tell themselves really that it's coming from outside forces. Like it's not really us, yeah. but these outside forces are so powerful on like a socio-political level mm. that we think it's our own voice mm. telling us this nonsense, Jelly. you know? So make yourself available don't judge it just let it out and then sort it out later if you don't like it later fine if there's one piece you can take from it to build on later dope keep yeah. everything love mm -hmm. it love it 
Um, wow, that's great stuff right there. Uh, Thanks, man. So in the heat of creating, um, mm -hmm. has Seymour Perspective written his best bar yet? And or what is your favorite bar of the moment? Mm, good question. Um, I don't know if I've written my best yet. Um, I think every every effort I'm trying to push forward. I'm trying to like, oh, I want nice. everything I do to be the next best yet. You know what I mean? Um, oh yeah, man, what's the lines? One? Like, like when you think of something, oh man, that's still nice. Yeah. You still recite it to I'm rocking day. it to shock through the blockage of seven chakras, space shining and polishing, crown jewel that you've forgotten. Ooh, okay. That's something that, that's something that runs through my head from time to time. There was another one uh, recently that I wrote with these cats from Detroit that was that got stuck in my head the other day. What was that? Um, oh yeah, uh, something something. These cats rap poorly, like a second-rate mummification, mumbling hatred, coming complacent. They think they live, but they're under the basement, right? Mm. Like that kind of. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now I'm gonna flip it. What is uh -huh. what has probably been your most difficult line, and or most introspective line that made it difficult? Uh, if if it was mm. that in a way, um, mm -hmm. you know that, that what was like one of the hardest right? Because I'm sure like you like like myself or like like a lot of other cats. You know you you put your soul, you put your heart into these lines. You know yeah. what, what was one that kind of really hit home uh, mm -hmm. for yourself and, and or you, something you put together that a specific listener, maybe a mo your mother, your father, or sister, or something when it related to them in a way that you were yeah. afraid how they would take it or to yeah. homie or, you know, whomever. Um, can you yeah. talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. There was, um, I wrote two pieces. They're kind of counterparts to each other. One for my mom and one for my papa. Um, and um, when I finally showed the one to my mom, you know, it was like, it was like brutally honest. And it was like about all the trauma she had been through and the things we had been through with my dad as a family and stuff. Um, and she was like, Oh my God, can I share that with like my friends at the school? Like when she was still teaching, um, you know, and like, will you send me, you know, the lyrics for that and stuff? I'm like, really? You want shit? Like, yeah. that's the intense stuff. And she's like, no, it's beautiful. She's like, no, you need to like do that, you know? And, um, that was really enlightening. And I think we take for granted, like what folks can like handle, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like we're kind of always pulling punches with the truth in some way. Mm -hmm. And I, like this song about my mom, you know, which was like brutally honest and difficult to write, yeah. like she loved and it, it meant a lot to her to hear yeah. it, you know? Um, and then there was another one, uh, you know, I think, she wanted to share it and it was like you take for granted how it impacts people how telling the truth impacts people right mm -hmm. um and so i wrote this other song for my papa and um he i don't think he's really processed that you know just in terms of like keeping up with like the raps in english kind of stuff mm -hmm. um like that's a thing where he doesn't catch it all. He's, but he's like, this is, this is dope, you know? <laughs> um, but, but, but writing that was really difficult, you know, talking about his abuse and like different things. Um, what was one of the lines? Um, uh, there's this sequence where it goes from talking about these experiences with my family and his hardship and like facing where he comes from and trying to understand his experience through it mm -hmm. and like how he was like at a disadvantage, you know, through these experiences, which set him up to have all of this anger and then not know what to do with it and not have the tools because like, you know, generations of, of family stuff didn't allow men to have tools to like work stuff out like that except for abuse you know what i mean yeah. so um one of the hardest moments was coming down to this this piece that was like um 
a man, a race, a lack of grace, a gap, a race, a family, estranged, a curse, a blame, a push, a graze, a bruise, a face, a pistol, afraid. Mm. Mm. Nice. Yeah. I hate to say nice, but just, you know, powerful. Yeah. Powerful. Yeah. Appreciate it. For sure. Yeah. Um, appreciate you sharing on that, man. Because, you know, that that's, again, we put ourselves into our creativity, into our, our writing. And uh, uh, I think a lot of people that, you know, who create, that want to tell their story, you know, we put it into the work. And mm -hmm. you know, getting those stories of, of how that was put in is very important and inspiring. Mm -hmm. So thank you for sharing that. No doubt. Um, thank you. Another thing I want to, you know, talk about uh, before we talk about some of your recent uh, projects was, uh, you know, you, uh, from what, from what I gather, um, I, I know for myself personally, I'm very proud to be of the culture that I am being Filipino. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I see that through some of your works as well in, mm -hmm. in some of the videos that I saw. Um, mm -hmm. When did you start incorporating your culture into that? What inspired that? Um, and what does mm -hmm. that mean to you uh, when you share mm -hmm. that to the world? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because it's something like, I don't want to be like the cat waving like the Mexican flag on the stage. You know what I mean? Cause it's like, it feels like I'm selling that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I don't want to sell that. Like yeah. it's like, all of this is, is so important to me. Like being mixed. I'm Chicano, mm -hmm. you know, like I grew up Brown. I grew up with Chicano culture, with Mexican culture, you know? Um, and so I think it's always been there. It just hasn't always been like something I'm using to like hit people over the head, yeah. like that I'm Chicano, you know, or that I'm Mexican, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's, there's always been some Spanish here and there. There's always been, whatever I talk about a licuado, I talk about, you know what I mean? Um, different things like that. Um, and it's all of those experiences inform who I am, which are, essentially you know mexican-american chicano experiences mm -hmm. which like you don't get to say are or are not chicano experiences you know what i mean mm -hmm. and so even if i'm not waving that flag or if i'm not speaking spanish or if i'm not you know saying that i did you know talking about that family barbecue vibe or whatever you know that is like so central i think to our identities right yeah. um like it's it's still there and it's still coming out because I can't I can't not be that. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, totally. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, I I am a proud Filipino, but at the same time, mm -hmm. I've never been to the Philippines. You know, it's just mm -hmm. I can't erase this. It's just who I am. Mm -hmm. but, it's, right. but I am a Filipino American. You know, and yeah. my father is white, and you know, he I am his, still him. Although, you know, yep. there's a lot of issues I have in, you know, like you were saying with your father and this and the third, uh, mm -hmm. that, you know, I'm still an American, you know, and as much as mm -hmm. I, this past four years, I haven't been really wanting to say I'm an American because of mm -hmm. what America has displayed to the rest of the world. You know, it's been difficult to claim America, you know, mm -hmm. but I am an American, um, mm -hmm. but I, I feel that respect that. And uh, I'm just curious, because I think a lot of us that, you know, are, uh, and being a Macizo, you know, that are, are that, but then also want to reach with our music. You know, you want the music to tell mm -hmm. the story. But then at the same time, you know, I wave the flag because I want to inspire and show that I'm with you and that you can relate to me in case you don't know, you know, in some way. Or some Word. Or some fashion, well, know? that's the thing, right? Like, I, I don't, that's the thing. I don't want to hide it. I don't yeah. want to sell it and I don't want to hide it. Mm -hmm. And like, it's kind of like, it's, it's kind of like all the nerdery influences in my life. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. or my sense of humor or like my sexuality, like whatever. Like there's, I want to have all of these different parts of me. Like I want, I want to express all of that in my art. You know what I'm saying? Totally. And like that, that's where I'm at. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. It's, it's that difficult when you're an artist, when you want to reach the world, because 
like I, I want to reach the world. I don't want people just pigeonhole. Oh, he's just trying to do it for Filipinos or just Asian Americans <laughs> or this and the third. I want to reach everybody. But this is who I am, and I'm gonna cheer and wave the flag that I'm in. You know that this is me. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. love me and that's all tight. the bits and pieces. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's the thing, right? Because we are like there, there, and there are so many ways that we do like wave the flag. Yeah. You know, because we're like. I'm putting on for us. Yeah. Like this, because it's never, it's never just for you. You know, when you're part of a community that is oppressed, exactly. anything that you do, anything that you can do to push forward, that's not just for you. It's for all of you, you know? Always. And so we, we're kind of always waving that flag in, in that sense. Yeah. 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 I feel you in every way, man. Yeah. And so let's right. talk about some of the amazing projects you released, uh, mm. released recently. Um, I saw you had like a playlist of you had you have so many different nuances to your vibe, bro, which is beautiful. Like I Thanks, saw man. like this this uh, YouTube beat mix of you kind of like beatboxing with doing some visual art with incorporating different <laughs> imagery, which was yeah. just another level that certain cats, if they ain't with it right here, they may not feel it. And <laughs> I felt it. So appreciate it. Love that. And then you had like, uh, com and props on this. Uh, I would believe this was the project that you uh, got the grant from Minnesota where you spoke on sexuality and mm -hmm. uh, you had like three different music videos that kind of touched yep. upon that. Uh, I, I think I'm throwing too much at once. Let's, let's talk, which <laughs> do you want to go on first? This, this uh, you know, this amazing video beatbox playlist. Uh, or let's let's yeah. start with that and then go into the, that that uh the mixture tight. of albums that you do for Minnesota. Yeah, tight. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. So what what do you want to know about these beatbox videos? Just where did that come from? Like, did you already yeah, have these yeah. visuals in mind and then you had like the, mm -hmm. the beat and then you kind of matched it? Or like where mm -hmm. what came first for that one? Yeah, where? Yeah, good question. So um so I've I've been working with this loop station 505. It's the boss loop station. Um it's basically five tracks, but each track you can you can overdub repeatedly on them so you can have a pretty rich sound it's got like cool effects on there and stuff mm -hmm. so so i've been beatboxing for a number of years i used to beatbox for this group called the luna blues machine in chicago as their drummer so like i've been i've been beatboxing but it's not something i'm always like bringing to the fore in that way when i'm making beats and performing and rapping or whatever right so this has really given me opportunity to on the fly produce some beatbox stuff and i've been doing that for like the last year uh and a half or so maybe um and um so i, I just right now like my partner and i magnificat Catherine parent she lays a lot of beautiful vocal ethereal haunting vocals and stuff onto this too mm -hmm. and so we have like 150 beats or something that we've made over the last year and so i'm just like i need to start doing something with this stuff and so i'm like i have videos up you know, of it, uh, of me, you know, sequencing or playing whatever. And then I have, you know, I'm just, like I said, I'm an artist who's doing all these different things all the time. I'm taking photos and videos of just shit that is interesting to me or cool or whatever. So I end up with all this footage of like, you know, the octopus at the aquarium in Cleveland or like the manta rays, you know, swimming through the thing and the sharks over my head and like, you know, this crazy thunderstorm or whatever, right? Yeah. So then I'm like, oh, let me just start putting this stuff together. What better time than when I'm like trapped alone in my house for eight months, you know, during the pandemic. Yeah. It's like, okay, let me start to put this together just on my phone. So, you know, I would just slap an instrumental on there and then take these visuals and just I always try to make it relevant, you know? Like I did one, the, the first one I did, um, I actually recorded specifically, it was very simple. It was in black and white. It was just like my face. And it was just kind of like looking different directions. Yeah. But then it cut to like a full color, like kind of like headbang kind of a thing for the chorus. And then went back to this other thing. And it was very much about like kind of being stuck in place, but like needing to let that out. So that was about this pandemic experience, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, so they're almost like these short films in a way, you know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of like abstract short films. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I was ready to put out some other ones. And then the uprising started. So I couldn't, I couldn't put something out that like, well, first of all, you just got to wait to put anything out. 
and just like deal with what's going on, make sure people are safe and like, yeah. you know, community organizing and community defense stuff or whatever, like just seeing where you fit in um, and how you can help uh, the situation, you know what I mean? And help correct misinformation and that kind of stuff, right? Messaging correction and stuff, I think mm -hmm. of it as. Online, whatever, that kind of stuff. So after some time, I was like, cool, I'll put something out, but I gotta, I gotta make it relevant. So then I found the right beat. I found some imagery and I was like, cool, this is like kind of about white supremacy. That was a piece called Shark Hunt. Um, and there's all these sharks kind of swimming through the sky and a, a storm and stuff. And, and I kind of reversed it because I was like, no, like, it's not that the storm is coming. It's not that the shark is coming after us. It's like, no, we're going to have, we're going to put white supremacy on, on the run, you know, um, and, and we're gonna we're gonna switch the dynamic, you know that kind of thing. Um, so I've done maybe like five of those. Yeah. I call them. I put them out on Fridays, but I don't put them out every Friday just because I'm not that disciplined, honestly. <laughs> so, but like, there's like five or six of those. Yeah. Um, I did one. I probably sent you the Trump one first, right? Yeah. The book. Yeah. Um, and uh, so yeah, that's like I mean that's like a 15 minute video that's just and that's from a beat that was just jammed out with my partner and i on the loop station live yeah. um and a lot of that stuff is is freestyle so we just we just start i just drop a beat some bass she takes the mic put some stuff over it you know um and then yeah i took this video of uh this r somehow randomly i ended up with this fucked up trump rallies book that is like just some weird piece of propaganda but you look at it and it's like it's all either nonsense or flat out lies. Yeah. Like there's nothing else but those two things in it. And so I wanted to make some kind of art project. I held on to it for a while, a year or something. Two years maybe even. And I was like, this is too much. I got to get this thing out of my life. Yeah. I was like, this is the perfect time as we go into these primaries, into this next whatever. Um, and I filmed that and I've been sharing it since as a prayer to get that motherfucker out and to defeat white supremacy. Yeah, wow, wow. Um, since you touched upon it, and you, since you are in one of the areas that, you know, kind of, well, kind of kicked everything off, you, you're you in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. um, before we go into the next piece, uh, I, I have to ask as a, mm -hmm. you know, as a writer, as a creative, as somebody who's like really emp an empath in a way, mm -hmm. um, you're really connected to the world and with what you create through your art. Um, mm -hmm. Just how has it been this past year, um, you know, with COVID, um, but then with, mm -hmm. you know, the uprisings, as you stated, in Minnesota mm -hmm. uh, from George Floyd? Yeah, it's, you know, it's been really difficult, you know. Um, you know, on some level, it's the kind of like, okay, like, um, introverts of the world, we got this, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we've been training for this our whole lives, you know. I so got my video games, I got some records, you know, whatever. Um, but it's tough. It's tough because it's such an emotional time for so many folks. Like, you know, like people are getting sick and that's a scare. If we don't lose them, it was still a thing to know that they got it, even if they're okay. Like, so there's so many experiences that we're constantly having where, that we're just like, it's, a, it's an emotional toll and it's trauma. Living through this experience for these last nine months now, that's trauma in and of itself, you know? And then on top of it, you can you continue to see, you know, the police um, brutality, the police murder, you know, the murderous police um, don't stop, you know? Um, and they're like out here without masks on and stuff. It's like, it's stupid. And so um, I feel like I've been lucky that I've like, in some ways I've had some stuff ready to release that felt super appropriate to now like my new album jaws of life i was waiting to release that and then at the start at the outset of covid i was like this seems like a really good time like politics are fucked up we're trapped in our houses we're all scared to death of this virus let me put this out as a catharsis it's healing to me it's speaking to me it's got to do something for other folks too right mm -hmm. um and then like with these beats, I had a stockpile of beats, you know, and I kept on doing it. I made it a practice. I made it a point to like continue working on that because I was stuck in my house. Yeah. So then I just I 
had more and more of a stockpile to choose from. And then cool. I've also, I also have all this video and I have like, you know, this like semi fancy iPhone so I can just do the video right here. Yeah. Boom. With my coffee, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so, but in some way, like I had some of that stuff already that I was able to just like put together away in a way and put out, you know what I mean? And then it being such a healing practice to like do, you know, the, the visual art on a regular basis. Like um, I was doing these Saturday sessions with my partner, Magnificat, where we would go live and create beats on the fly mm -hmm. and then like talk about what was going on for us a little bit or that week or whatever. Um, and I would create visual art to go with that as well. So that's all, that was all really healing in terms of just like, let me be accountable to something that is also healing for me and healing for others that can spark some conversation, you know, that can help just help get us through. And that's been my whole thing, you know, it's just like, how can I offer what I have or, or what I'm, how can I work on something that can, that can offer somebody something to help them get through this. I feel you, bro. And I have to say you, uh, to you, thank you for that. Uh, for myself, mm. uh, earlier this year when everything was happening, I closed up. I, I closed my shell and I was just concentrating mm -hmm. on family. I stopped, you know, doing a lot of stuff. Uh, well, because mm -hmm. we couldn't really do a lot of stuff. But even mm -hmm. with, even if I could have, you know, I just, uh, I had to bring it in, concentrate mm -hmm. on family. And it took me a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was seeing other people, other creatives starting to do stuff that pushed me into like creating again and and doing things like this and speaking with you, I, I really popped off doing interviews because that's really all I, mm. I can do at the moment. I use usually do a bunch of convention shows and I'm an actor mm -hmm. and I'm a filmmaker, can't exactly mm. do any of that type of stuff. So my therapy has been doing interviews like this uh, and talking awesome. to you. And uh, it's, it's very healing and it's very therapeutic and very inspiring talking uh with people like yourselves and just mm -hmm. I, I can't wait to you know uh when we can and we have a vaccine and we i can share <laughs> some of that energy and you know i'm mm -hmm. running at the moment but uh this mm -hmm. in a way is still just very beautiful and i think is as long if we can inspire right now by just doing things like this that's mm -hmm. helping create for the world and, and absolutely showing that there's a silver lining at the end of this dark tunnel that we're all in so mm -hmm. thank you for doing what you've done uh, throughout mm -hmm. the past year. Uh, Yo, it's my give, pleasure. Man. Give life, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Thanks so, for having me here and like signal boosting, you know, and oh, and doing everything yeah. that you do. It's so it's so important. It's so vital. You know, you're like a fuse box connecting artists to, to peoples and peoples to artists. And that's so important. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Got to because you can't the people that are doing things amazing like you need to know about it. Uh, so this Minnesota Arts Project, that was another playlist that I checked out and you, yeah, like three different tracks, I believe, or, and videos. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. let's talk on that before we get to Jaws of Life. Yeah, cool. And is that connected um, to Jaws of Life or some of those tracks on the Jaws of Life album? If I, no, if I'm no, gonna... that's a totally different project. Okay. Yeah. So okay. those three are part of, um, another album called Sex Tape. Oh yes, and, that's right. Yep. The title is in parentheses after Sex Tape is or my response to our morbidly underdeveloped sex education, right? Um, so that's something, that's something that my brother produced. He, he's got all these beautiful boom bap, funky beats, you know, really like just textured, layer, beautiful kind of classics type hip hop um, that is still new and, and refreshing, I think. Um, yeah, so that album, you know, came out uh, a few years ago now. Um, and we were able to put out a video for it a year or two ago. Um, and then I got this grant to make a new series of videos to like go along with it, to make like a suite. Um, and I just wanted to kind of like break up how we typically talk about or see sexuality, sex, um, consent, uh, rape culture in, in media. And so um, this was kind of like my, felt felt really cool that I was able to like do some producing of these videos um like art direction and and direction which was which was like a new fresh thing for me to get involved in um I just I love the way that they turned out I think they're each of them is like something a little different 
in the same kind of magically real universe, you know, mm-hmm. and they're different like conversations and relationships with like aspects of yourself in conversation with aspects of, you know, the culture around us in the air, that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, definitely with a focus on consent, uh, healthy sexuality and, and um, as a man, you know, uh, just like standing up against rape culture. And I think it's beautiful and, and amazing. And I, I, and I have to ask, so was there a story or a situation that uh, that birthed the, the reason why you did mm-hmm. it or just because you just, uh, well, I think as men that are conscious and, and mm-hmm. see the world and see how some of us other males are acting out with women and, and in general, mm-hmm. and, and then just, the, oh, again, the over-sexualization uh, mm-hmm. and, and just calling that out. Uh, yeah. Was there a situation or just you wanted to call that out in a creative fashion? Yeah, you know, it's it actually started with my brother um, crafting these beats, you know, and like we have a lot of the same like um, like musical context, you know, like there was stuff that like uh, Cool Keith did, you know, there's like Dr. Octagon and they were sampling weird like porn movie snippets and stuff and you know like um prince paul did some stuff you know and he was you know we're like huge prince paul fans and dr octagon fans and um dan the automator and um he was just inspired to like kind of try his hand at this and he was like what if i just do stuff that's just grabs from you know the sonic palette of 70s porn in terms of the music because there's all this funk there was like really dope musicians who were like putting down these soundtracks but then like where do you go from there though you know like that's not that's not really a stepping stone you know so there's like this wealth of music to dig into you know um so he started digging and finding all these samples and bringing it together and was like hey we need to make a sex album and it'll be so great and i was like I don't know, man, that sounds a little weird. (laughs) And I was like, okay, wait. I was like, we got this, okay. So what I'll do is I'll just, I'll address it from a unique standpoint. Cause usually when people talk about sex and in music in general, but specifically rap, when it's explicit, it's like, it's raunchy and the whole point is just, it's kind of like some weird male fantasy. Um, So I wanted to do it in a way that was artful that was respectful and that focused consent um, and that could combat rape culture, you know, and catcalling and stuff. So Dude Interrupted is a song that's like challenging. It's like a conversation between two men where you're challenging what they're saying casually, kind of like as you're out having a good time or whatever. And like, I honestly, I think that a lot of men could have those conversations, but they stop short because we're always being ostracized for like thinking too much or for being, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? And so hopefully this, this song kind of in this album gives people a tool that they can use to, to have some of those conversations and whatnot. Oh, so thank you. Um, yeah. So jaws of life. Uh, yeah. Let's, let's talk about uh, what was maybe the first track that you came uh, together before it became this album and mm-hmm. uh, like favorite track uh, and just mm-hmm. how, and let's just talk about the formation of Jaws of Life. Yeah, for sure. Um, that came through another producer approaching me, this dude, Sarah Bellum one, uh, who I met, you know, when I was really young, just starting off, he was just starting off. He's like an NPC wizard and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and we had lost track for a while and reconnected and he started sending me these beats. He's like, hey, let's do a song. Cool. Let's do this song. Oh, let's do an EP. Oh, cool. Let's do an album. Wait, let's do like he was sending me so much stuff. It was like a series of EPs that was going to lead up to the album. And so finally we got into crafting the album and it just kept on changing and transforming. Um, One of the first pieces was probably Light of the Day, um, which is one of my favorites on there. But even that track sounded totally different initially. Because then what he did was he brought in this other producer and musician who was playing keys on it and doing all this different stuff. He added some different vocals here and there. Um, And suddenly we had a very like 
a super unique sound that kind of bugged me out at first. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> this is very different than where we were going, you know? Yeah. But then I was like, nah, this is fresh. This is it, you know? And then the the the, the cherry on top was having, again, Catherine Magnificat um, put her vocals in, so producing her vocals over this other stuff into, like, this, like, really cool layered experience from start to finish. Um, and I think the joint with her that is one of my favorites is probably... Um, uh, tectonic grind uh, Atlantis and she does a little bit of poetry in the beginning and then sings all over it and she sounds like she's like underwater she sounds like a siren and like you know what I mean it's yeah. it's fresh it's 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 a really unique and, and beautiful album I think it's one of my most ambitious works honestly and I'm really proud of it dope dope so because it kind of came out you know it came out this past year right uh, if i'm not mistaken yeah um and uh but because you couldn't like give it to the world via concert in a way um yeah are you looking forward to when we have a vaccine uh, yeah performing uh this album and 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 how are how are you just you know again we we, we are kind of discussing you know what you've done this past year mm -hmm. and kind of still creating and still keeping mm -hmm. that vibe and you've been giving energy to the world uh, yeah, in different fashions and forms of mm -hmm. art that we stop that we talked on when yeah. you do have a vaccine and you can uh, go and you know, perform this. Um, mm -hmm. What are you looking forward to more and and, and just uh, how is it going to change and just and, and I've asked this with other artists, it's, you know, that, you know, you, you put out this album to, to help keep us inspired, but it's, mm -hmm. it's just been such a different year to put out projects because, yeah. you know, it, it's it's just kind of different reception, you know? Um, yeah. Like, I think, you know, in some fashion, you like, it's it's not going to like really be out there until we can be out there. Like, <laughs> right, right. it's just been so unreal. You know, it's just a yeah. weird transition as creators. Yeah. Um, well, it's just such a weird like, thing. What are you, you thinking know? about like, when we are out of this and you can actually yeah. travel and perform this album? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, oh, we, you know, we keep on, a lot of us are talking about like how, when this is over, or when we get to a, do, when things are more, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I hate to say it, but I, I'm, I'm just not counting on it. You know, like, I'm just trying to, trying to adjust in ways that like I can, offer things to people in unique ways, you know? So like I put it out and, you know, it's kind of like, like you said, it's a weird time to put out music and to put stuff out there. Um, so I just try to like make it a person to person thing. Like, Hey, here's this thing. I hope it gets you through. It's helpful for me, you know? And I think Jaws of Life is one of those things where it's like, it's about like trauma. It's about tragedy. It's about the wreckage. And it's like, but also about like how we get through that and how we get out of that, you know? So I, I want it to be a tool for people to like reflect and be inspired and to like move through, you know? Um, and leading up to this, I was actually already thinking about, well, how can I, how can I lead up to its release in, in a unique, intimate way? And so I was doing these listening parties in people's houses or different like small organiza grassroots organizations and stuff and gather with people, listen to the album and like have a drink and like talk and philosophize or whatever, you know? Um, so that was kind of the lead up. And, and now that it's out, it's still a little anticlimactic because it's not like there's a show and there's a special guest and it's at the spot and whatever, you know? It's just kind of like, it's out now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and so, you know, how can I continue to be creative? You know, hopefully I can uh, I can do some some videos for it and, and work that out. You know, again, that'll be, I'll have to be really creative. I'll have to be, try to do things in a super unique way without like a team of people that can congregate and work on this thing. You know what I mean? Um, so I think it's, it's really just, it lies in that, you know, that, um, that it's up to us to make the adjustments to this experience because who knows how long it's going to be and people need shit now, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so how do totally. we, how do we do that? And I don't know 
but yeah. that's what I'm thinking about, you know? I'm with you. Yeah, that's that's, that's something that I, I can't stop thinking about. Even though, yeah. like, we had a, you know, as we started off earlier, we had a great weekend. I have a glimmer of hope with uh, Biden being elected. But yeah. I still, you know, it's going to be a while since we have a good vaccine. Um, we still got to last until January 20th, until uh, he's uh, all the way out, you know? Yeah. And but this then, year, I mean, this year, that's going to, that's like another two years or another year yeah six you know. months at least you know in terms yeah. of like this like covid year time mm -hmm. you know it, it's a wrap this year's a wrap and i think even going it's I, I don't foresee like for me i do a lot of conventions and shows i don't feel comfortable even once the vaccine is out i, I think it'll probably be about maybe this time next year where i may do a show um and that's still a, like this you know uh where i've where I think I'll feel safe uh, to, to be out and about because I don't want to bring yeah. anything home to my wife and daughter. Um, Same, yeah. You know? Yeah, I did a thing recently for Dia de los Muertos um, and it was outdoors and they were like cleaning the mic between things and it was social distance and it was like, well, even outside, it was a certain number of people that could be there. Yeah. Um, but even that made me pretty nervous. That's as close as I've gotten to any kind of like public interaction. Um, yeah. And, you know, I'm yeah. glad I'm okay. I'm good and healthy, yeah. but I don't know how often I want to do even that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not a game. And uh, mm -mm. a lot of people are confused because of the mixed messaging, uh, mm -hmm. the, the tyrants that we have. In yeah. Lives. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's, let, let's turn it back to inspire. I, I, we've been inspiring and then I brought it back to the, to no. like the, some of that, but it's the reality. No, no, and, we no, have it's to great. Accept it. yeah. and it's, it's living in this, and creating and, and moving into the future and, and, you know, it, it may not go away. Who knows? It's just, you have to just keep on living and what yeah. you're doing is inspiring. And, and, and that's why I want to shine the light on it. And I can't thank you enough, but then you, but again, as creators, like when I can speak to the people and, you know, cause you're, you're constantly thinking about, and you're, you're making those transitions, you're making those moves, you're planning ahead. So you, you got to ask. And, and I think we're all having, this difficulty in really figuring it out because we don't really truly know what yeah. is, it's going to be it. Yeah. Like if we could say, you know, March, yeah, things are going to blah, 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 it'd be like, cool. Here's what I'm kind of thinking, you know, the spring and summer are going to look like it's going to be a time of transition by the fall, blah, blah, blah is going to be happening. There's going to be this event, you know, for my birthday, blah, 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 whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but it's like, God, we don't know, you know, and I, mm. I look forward to, to being able to congregate with people like that again. Um, oh, but until then, I just, I can't count on it. Yeah. Cause, cause it's just, that's almost its own burden, you know? So I just need to like, what can I do now to keep it moving to feel like I'm connecting with people to make people feel like they're connected. Um, even when we can't like look at each other in the eye per se, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So what are we working on right now? What are we making? What are we, in the studio, whether it be music, art, uh, what, what, yeah. what are just some of the things that are you passing your time until we can yeah. congregate? Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm working on these mixtapes right now, okay. um, which I've been doing these series of mixtapes as well that are just like, they're like, the, it's like a DJ mixtape, right? So oh, it's yeah, just like a bunch of music. You, you sent me a cool little mix that uh, yeah. I, I was vibing off here and there. Uh, I yeah. appreciate it. Definitely. Yeah, so I did the kindling mix. You know, that was that was a little while after um, the uprisings were popping off, and then I did the follow up to that, um, which was just a few weeks ago now. Um, uh, Goodbye summer, hello fall of empire, um, and then I'm working on one right now, which is kind of trying to encapsulate all the c competing feelings of this past weekend, you know, um, oh, and yeah. everything that's going on. So. So I'm working on those. That's really healing. That's good. And getting that into people's ears uh, is great. And then um, I'm also doing a bunch of visual art stuff. Um, I just found out today that I got a couple of grants. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do like, um, we're appreciated. Thanks. Yeah. There's just a couple of little ones, but you know, it's, it's encouraging and, yeah. and they're good projects. So um, my apartment has all of these windows, like on an alley and then on the sidewalk um and i'm gonna basically make that into like a sidewalk gallery an alley gal gallery oh, um cool. so i'm gonna be working on stuff for the, for the next couple of months to just like 
use specifically use those windows as uh, a way to show art to the community to like encourage them and like you know make them feel like they're more connected even when we can't see each other and that kind of thing oh, give them things dope. to reflect on i love on. that i love that idea yeah. i can't wait to see uh yeah i'm gonna we're gonna in a few moments share those socials uh, i'm gonna make sure i'm Thanks. following you so i could peep that definitely yeah word thanks and then there's this cohort um that i'm gonna be a part of uh i'm gonna be learning how to do like uh projection mapping have you ever seen that or heard about that yeah i've, I've heard of um, they used to pro uh when uh trump first got into office they were projecting like loser all kind of stuff uh, is it yeah. some, some, something like that where you projected yeah. buildings yeah oh, exactly so like some public art i'll be able to mm -hmm. like incorporate my visual art and like video stuff and it's some large scale projection stuff, oh. uh, which is super exciting. And that's like a cohort for the next next year uh, or so. So that's dope. Super cool. Yeah. Oh, and I have another album uh, coming out as well. Man, I got so much stuff. So uh, hey, there, there's this cat named, Brush named The Rube. Off, bro. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the homie The Rube is an incredible producer as well. And he and I are working on something called... Um, Edgar Allan Poe Dameron. <laughs> and uh, that's that's like super Star Wars now. We're going to do a series of Star Wars themed music videos. It's got all, it's a bunch of sound effects, blaster effects and droids. And like, all, well, there's a, myth, a whole mythology about Edgar Allan Poe Dameron and stuff. Yo. Um, that's you know going to be bang. Yeah, you know the Knock fam is like straight up. We Star Wars geeks like a mug. So yes. you know we're going to eat all of that up. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I cannot wait to share it with you. It's that he's like, he's basically, I just gave him a bunch of acapellas and we've been uh, crafting it together since then. But that dude is putting in work. I've kind of let loose the reins. I'm like, man, I just trust you. Have fun. And then we check in from time to time and build on ideas and whatnot. And we might eat. We were talking the other day. We were like, what if we built like... What if we built a tauntaun that I could climb out of for the video, you know? And then he's like, yeah, you could like, we could have the tauntaun inside the tauntaun is actually like the chill spot with all of our equipment. And it was like, like a lounge and like, man, so we're going to have a lot of fun with that. That's um, cool, man. Make we'll sure see how that develops. The, the 501st, man. That's like the big Star Wars costuming group. Nice. Get those 501st cats out there to, to be Love in the video. It. They'll, they'll, I'm, they'll I'm come. Gonna, they'll come, gonna, man. <laughs> I'm gonna note that down right now. 501st yeah, costuming group. I'm I'm not sure if there's a Minnesota group, but I'm sure there are. They're like the cool. largest Star Wars group because I run a cosplay charity and uh, oh, I get cool. a lot of those cats out. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we'll have to talk on the side if you need some Star Wars cosplayers. I'm sure oh, I can get you some yes, out here in Minnesota. Love that. Yeah. Yo. Yes, we will talk. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. So then there's that. Um, there is. I'm producing. I'm helping my partner produce her album, which she's crafting on. Uh, the loop station and doing like, she's taking her whole like singer songwriter thing to this new level where she's playing guitar, but then looping it and using percussion. And then I'm just helping her kind of like bring it to life and mix it and, and that kind of thing. And that shit is going to be really dope. She's working on an album called Swampling, which is like in the Swamp Thing universe. Whoa. <laughs> and it's, and it's, and it's all like, but it's all like spiritual and it's about like growing into this new entity after you've been destroyed from her like relationship with religion and all kinds mm. of stuff. And it's dope. Mm. It's dope. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then there's the beats that we've been making and I'm going to be rapping to those beats. We're going to do stuff with that. So a lot to look forward to. I love that. That's dope. Yo, dope. Yo, see more perspective. My man killing it. Much All right, love. brother. This has been a, 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 a tremendous pleasure. Thank you for a lot of your time. Mm -hmm. uh, let's let's throw them socials out there so uh, we can get these new fans following you and checking yes, out. Yes, I know I'm gonna be following you because I definitely want to peep this art installation you're doing in your windows. Yes, appreciate you. Thanks. Yeah. So at Mr. Seymour at Mr. Underscore C with your eyes more. Um, that's on Twitter. That's on Instagram. See uh, more perspective. Three words. Um, uh, Facebook and then see more perspective three words.com. Yo, it's been a pleasure to, to speak with you, my guy. Uh, Likewise. I'm looking forward to 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 how uh, 
just just everything that you got ready that got ready to drop and just i, I gotta peep out more of this because uh, again i have to say with my knowledge cast like yourself i gotta listen to it a couple times I, i'm you know i'm still that <laughs> knowledge cat back in the day but you know the words don't hit until you it's, it's you gotta play it a couple more times man yeah and then you're like oh that and oh did he just <laughs> wait oh you yeah. know it's yeah you gotta, I'm a little slow nowadays. I'm 43. No, I'm no, it's the same. But it's the same as it always yesterday. been, though. You know, so, it's like we want we want it to be, have, be a layered experience, so you can exactly keep pulling back the layers and keep hearing something new and different in it. You know, so that's what it is. My guy, so I'm thank honored you for that you're creating listening. beautiful content like that, man, for old heads like ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Thank you so much. So uh, thank you, you so much. Uh, I am Kuya P, aka Patrick Michael Strange. You can follow me at Temple Far East and at Strange since 1977. And I will hey. always be here at the Nerds of Color, giving you great interviews like my guy, Mr. Seymour Perspective, right over yeah. there. Uh, so make sure you follow us at the Nerds of Color. That's on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, thenerdsofcolor.org. Uh, we'll always be giving you these amazing content and these amazing people like Mr. Seymour. Thank you for checking us out. I am Kuya P, and we are out of here. Much love. Thank you. All right.